G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to DCS World with Mags and welcome aboard the SU-25T. Now this may be an unusual aircraft to actually have put up on the channel, but it just occurred to me going through my backlog of DCS videos the other day, I've never put this one up before. And this is actually a major issue considering that I tend to do a bit of focus in my DCS videos looking at the new player because this is the aircraft that all new players get access to for free when they download DCS. So, for those of you who don't play DCS that just watch my channel for the aviation videos, when you download DCS, the base client is absolutely free. It does not cost you a cent, and it comes with two aircraft. It comes with the TP-51D, which is a fully clickable, full fidelity P-51 Mustang. However, it is unarmed. It does not have access to any bombs, it does not have any guns in the wings, it is a training version of the aircraft, but it is an example of a fully clickable aircraft for you to play with before you spend any money on DCS. And then you get access to the SU-25T, which we're flying today. Now, the SU-25T is not a full fidelity aircraft. It's what's generally referred to as FC-3 level. That is, it is fully modelled, but it has simplistic systems. There's no clicking around in the cockpit. All the gauges and everything obviously work, but there's no clicking around, flipping switches inside of the cockpit. All the controls for the aircraft are accessed either via the keyboard, the mouse, or whatever you have bound to your joystick when you fly out. It is, however, fully functional. It has all of its weapons options available. You can fly it out on any of the missions that you wish to. It, it's a fully functional aircraft within DCS, and quite a good one as well. The SU-25T is an attack aircraft, a close support aircraft. It's, to put it more simply, the Russian equivalent of the A-10 Warthog. It's reasonably fast, stripped bare, and on a lower fuel setting. It'll do over 900 kilometers an hour with a full load and external tanks on. You're looking at around, well, it gets the shakes at about mm, 650 to 700 kilometers an hour. And even with the tanks on and a fairly full load of fuel, you'll get up to about 750 kilometers an hour. So it's not slow, but it's no supersonic jet fighter either. And it's, well, it's not meant to be. It's an attack aircraft. The idea is to blow up the enemies on the ground and have the fighters covering you, which is exactly what we're going to do on today's mission. Today's mission is based around the idea of the Russian and Georgian conflicts. In this particular one, Russia has pushed in into the northern part of Georgia. Georgia is currently defending a river. This river has four major bridge crossings and they're using it as a bottleneck to trap the Russians on one side and uh, pounding the hell out of them with artillery. So our objective, well it's not actually to take out the artillery directly. There's a warehouse just behind the front lines. It's serving as the logistics depot for all of the Georgian frontline forces. It's got all the repair parts for all of the tanks and all of the artillery. It's got all of the ammunition and it is also stockpiling the fuel. Our objective is to blow up this depot, essentially destroying all of the logistics to Georgian frontline forces. We're doing a two-ship flight, two SU-25Ts. Our payload is six 500 kilogram bombs, two IR missiles for defense, and we've also got external tanks just to make sure we have ample fuel to get to the target location and back again. Our flight path is going to take us across the northern side of the mountain range that divides Russia from Georgia. Once we reach our first waypoint, which is directly north of the combat area, we're going to turn south, cross the mountain ranges, and enter the AO from the north, where we will spot out our target and take out the buildings. We're going to be doing a little bit of precision bombing. I could have flown over and just released all of them in one massive pass, but we're going to be looking to take out individual buildings just to make sure we've destroyed everything that needs destroying. Now, we're not the only things in the sky. Georgia is putting up uh, combat air patrols, primarily consisting of F-5s. However, we do have a flight of our own MiG-29s that will be coming in to try and clear out the airspace while we're working. That being said, it's possible that we could be engaged while we're in the area, so we will be having to pay close attention to our RWR and what is going on around us in the sky, as well as on the ground. There is also some light-spotted air defense inside of the area as well. Now, the last thing I want to say about this particular mission, for those of you who haven't played DCS or have been thinking about it, everything you see in this mission has been assembled either from what is available in the base client or is available via mods for free. Nothing in this particular mission is actually paid. There is no dollars required to set yourself up a mission just like this one and to be able to fly out the SU-25T. 
obviously the 25T comes with DCS itself. The target we're going to be blowing up is assembled mostly out of mod components, uh, mostly the VP items pack that's available on the DCS website. It's got some really nice high quality buildings to set up a really nice looking target on the ground. And all of the AI units are of course in DCS as standard as well. So this is what DCS free to play looks like. I'm going to jump through to waypoint one just before we turn south into the mountains, and I hope you enjoy. Five, four, eight, four, six. This is our valley to turn in. All right, so let's select second waypoint. 84 kilometers to target and now we have to cross over the mountains so we've got to keep relatively low here I'm not particularly concerned with the air defenses that are set up around the site there's nothing that has a range long enough to be able to hit this far out around the front lines but the Georgians do have um, F5s flying around and they can pick us up on radar at this range, potentially. And I'd kind of rather not have that happen. That sun glare is horrible. barely see the ground through the front of the hut at the moment. It'd be nice if we can get some shadow over the damn cockpit. I mean, Russia, couldn't you have installed some anti-reflective glass or something for the HUD? I know that seems counterintuitive considering how the HUD works, but that's really shitty. Still, it is nice to fly early in the morning like this. I love flying through the mountains like this bit slower than I normally do, but... Alright. Nearly 60 kilometers to target. We're still on the Russian side of the border at this point. We've got to get up through this next series of valleys. Then we've got to cut across the white caps, or just off the white caps. I'd rather not go over snow, because that means I've gone too high. But cut over the core of the mountain range. And then I'm on the Georgian side of the mountains, and I'll have to find my way into the valleys, and providing I'm following the nav system, we should come in through a valley directly to the north of our target. Looks like we have run out of valley. Starting to think I should have taken a right back there and not the left, but that's fine. We'll just uh, go through this little uh, depression in the ridge line and then turn back to target. Uh, for the record, for those of you who either don't play DCS or um, or haven't flown the Su 25T or any of the Russian aircraft before, that's what the little ball is at the bottom of the screen, or at the bottom of the HUD at the moment. The little ball is the indicator for the location of the flight path for the navigation system. So it works a little odd in comparison to how Western nav systems work. Western nav systems tend to draw a line on the map and or just have an indicator on the heading ribbon at the top of the hut that just tells you if you're pointing towards the waypoint. It doesn't matter how far off waypoint you go, it always points towards the waypoint. The little ball on the HUD here is the replacement for that, and it shows altitude of the waypoint as it's been set, as well as the location of the actual flight path rather than the objective. I find the right switch on, there it is, 
Okay, so this is our bombing hub. And it's cleared the valley, so we are starting to spot the targets. Keeping us in a right bank here, the river should be just down to our left there, somewhere in the trees. Thank you, wingman. God, are you going to shut up anytime soon to fly the goddamn aircraft? Shooting at me for a second. Yeah. Go do your damn job, and hopefully that'll shut you up. Right, we've got some RWR beeps at the moment, so somebody's running radar across us. I'm not sure if that's one of the ground installations or if that's F5s. Target should be over here. Um. What was that? Please don't look me up. Some of those bombs are a little bit lighter. Target is coming up. Gonna go for the outer hangars. One released. I think I may have actually done that a little bit wrong there. Come on, engage the bandit. Yeah, the screeching at the moment, we are currently locked up. It's by one of the F5s. Uh, the Allied flight reports in the top left-hand corner that are popping up at the moment. That is, um, that's our MiG-29s have just arrived. And just in time, too, for looks. Splash Bandit at 153, so that's one of them down. Let's see. Oh, for God's sakes. Get him, please. I suppose I can't complain too much. They're doing exactly what I programmed them to do. They're trying to defend this base. Come on. One away. That should be right on the hangers. And they definitely got hits down there. Oh, bugger off. Expanded at 162. Is that the one that was on? No, I guess not. Oh, what the hell hit the water over there? Now, I'm, I'm popping countermeasures not just for a launch, but the countermeasures are set up to release flare and chaff. And the chaff can break the locks sometimes. Right. 
Then we'll go for the large hangar complex and the fuel tanks. And that is two away. Looks like our wingman is strafing that as well. Splash, hopefully that's all of this flight. We can get the hell out of here before the next one arrives. And wingman 2 engaging primary, so he's about to make another crack at the target. Right, at least it's easy to line up on the target now. With the, um, the smoke billowing out of it, it makes it very easy to spot. So we get rid of this last bomb, and then it's time for us to bug out. We have no reason to stay around here anymore. Looks like the target's pretty knackered, so... and right on the complex. And that one actually looked like it missed. I don't think I actually hit where I wanted to. Ah, no matter. Complex is well and truly screwed. The hangars have had a couple of big hits, have had a couple of big hits in the fuel tanks, and the larger complex was taken as well, so that is it. Time for us to get back up that valley and get the hell out of here. And I'm taking it by the fact that my RWR isn't beeping at me anymore, that all the tigers have been taken out. but that does mean that the second flight will probably be here very soon to continue the air support so definitely definitely time to get out of here all right clear the first ridge line we can drop into the valley and let's go home ladies and gents and that is the mission concluded successfully at this point i'm just winding the aircraft down and getting ready to put it back on the ground going back through the footage i missed about two of the six drops but i was carrying 500 kilogram bombs so i don't need to be too precise with them and the four bombs were more than enough actually having the wingman in this particular mission was a little bit overkill as well but it still is always worth having the backup but yeah, this is not a complex mission in any way, shape, or form. It took me only about half an hour to throw this together, um, actually possibly a little bit less. But the actual point of the mission was to actually have something to show those who are asking, you know, I want to try DCS, what do I have to buy, what do I have to get? Well, you don't have to buy and you don't have to get anything at all. A joystick is nice if you've got one, it doesn't have to be a particularly expensive one. But DCS itself is free and you have a combat aircraft you can fly and this is a very basic bombing mission and a basic example of what the SU-25T is capable of. It's capable of far more complex missions than I've shown off here. In fact I should probably do a couple more videos on the SU-25T showing off some of the other weapons that it has available. But this is just an example of what you could sit down and be doing in DCS 30 minutes after you finish downloading it. And as simple a mission as it was, that was actually a lot of fun. The, uh, the F5s had me worried there for a little bit. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. As always, remember to check the video description down below for links to my social media, my Twitch, my Discord, my Patreon, and my Subscribestar. If anyone is thinking of perhaps supporting the channel, I'm actually starting to recommend Subscribestar more than Patreon. Patreon's going a little off the deep end at the moment. But other than that, until next time... Remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you would like to see more, and as always, fly smart, fly safe, 
I don't catch you in the skies.